In this video, we're going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages between these different assumptions of LIFO and FIFO. In our example from our prior video with the Bluth banana stand, we went through a series of purchases of June and July and then a sale on July 4th of some bananas. And remember, these assumptions we're talking about are for accounting purposes. They do not have to match the actual physical flow. However, for our example, so it can connect with you, we'll assume the physical flow matches in these examples, but it's not a requirement. We talked about cash flow, how we purchased more inventory than we uh, sold uh, as far as what we got in, in sales, cash sales. And so if we did cash flow, assuming all our sales were cash, we got about $2,000 in cash. We spent $3,100 on inventory this, you know, over the period. And so the net balance is a, a, a negative balance in cash of $1,100 in the cash flow. We have negative cash outflow of $1,100. There's no assumption involved in that. That's fact. And so the other parts of the assumptions come into what our accrual income is going to be. Under FIFO, we take the first in, first out. And we end up with a profit of $1,900. Under LIFO, we take the last in first out, and we ended up with a profit of $1,100. Under the weighted average cost, cost method, we got something in between of $1,557 in profit. Now, what students always want to do is they want to say, oh, well, one is good and one is bad. And that's not usually the right way to approach almost any aspect of accounting. There's advantages and disadvantages of each one. And this is an example where you might want one or you might want the other. So let's talk about some of those advantages and disadvantages and try not to say, oh, something is labeled as good or bad. The only bad part is when we do accounting wrong. And all the accounting that's being done in each one of these examples is right. So none of them are necessarily bad, but there's advantages and disadvantages of each one. To start, weighted average cost it's just basically a peanut butter approach. This is oftentimes done in accounting where we just say, well, let's just take the average of the cost of something and then just spread it over as many of the items that touch it as we can. And that's what we do with weighted average cost. We say, what's the total amount we spent on inventory? How many items of inventory do we have? Well, that's our cost of inventory. So we take that average, that weighted average cost, and there's not as much nuance as far as going on there. It's always going to be in between LIFO and FIFO. We look at FIFO. Um, and look at the advantages and problems. FIFO has the first in, first out method. And we're going to not, this is in comparison to LIFO that we're looking at. So looking at FIFO, we'll have a higher reported book net income. Now, why did I say book net income? Remember, cash, cash is always, cash is fact. So the cash income that we get is, is, is negative because we spent more on inventory. We might not be a bad thing because we might be leveling up for the weekend when more people are going to buy these bananas, right? So higher book income uh, under FIFO is generally what will happen. And the reason why you'll have higher book income, reported book net income, is because you're always getting your inventory through and out. And so as a result, so this first advantage assumes a period of inflation and higher prices over time which is most of the situations we face. Most of the situations we face, prices are increasing over time, the government is printing more money over time, and as a result, causing inflation to happen, so prices are increasing. Well, if prices are increasing over, in, in, over time, you're gonna have a higher reported book net income. And the reason why you're gonna have a higher book net income is with first in, first out, if prices are increasing, well, if you're taking that first little bit out, and that's what's going to actually get through the system, your margin is going to be higher because you're using the lower cost of an earlier period on the income statement. Whereas in LIFO, you don't use that. You most use the most current cost on, the, uh, on increasing prices. Now, it's important to realize that this switches if you have a period of declining prices. If you have a period of declining prices, it could very well be that your book net income could be higher as a result of the other methodology, LIFO. But we're assuming Assume that you get uh, uh, inflation, you know, increasing, not uh, not deflation, right? So inflation, assuming inflation, you're going to have higher book net income over time using FIFO, first in, first out, because you're taking the most, the, the oldest items in your inventory and always cycling those out. And so as you add to the inventory, the newer items that are there are priced more, whereas LIFO takes those new ones and you, and that's the one it accounts for. The balance sheet is more accurate. What do we mean by this? 
Well, the balance sheet, it's because you're cycling through your oldest and getting them out and putting new ones in, the values on the balance sheet will be more accurate. They will be more precise and more tied to current values. Under LIFO, remember, we have this, we have this uh, freezer and we're, we're just taken from the top. That means we get all these old bananas down at the bottom, assuming they don't ever go bad. But we have all these old bananas at the bottom that are on really old prices that we might never ever get to. And that represent, that's represented on our balance sheet. Those old bananas at the bottom of the freezer at the banana stand, they never get grabbed by Job. And so if Job's always the one running it and we do LIFO over time, we're going to end up with bananas on the bottom of that banana stand that just haven't been sold. And they're the older priced ones. And remember, we, we don't assume they go bad, but that's that's the assumption of the, the inventory flow. So the pricing of those lower bananas in the inventory, those are going to end up on the balance sheet. And those are really dis disconnected with current values because those bananas were priced a long time ago and inflation and other things happen so that it makes it so those bananas are not priced accurately on the balance sheet. Under FIFO, they will be priced accurately because guess what? Under FIFO, you have somebody like George Michael that goes and pulls from the bottom and pulls them out and he's getting all these old priced inventory and making sure they just get cleared out so we we have all the oldest stuff getting sold first. The other thing about FIFO is it reflects how you often think about the physical flow of goods. Most of the time, people think about cycling through things as cycling through the oldest first and then and then and, and then passing it on, right? So if you were to have an inventory of of you know uh, say items at a grocery store, say dairy, you would want to get rid of your oldest the items that are the oldest first before expiration before you got into the new ones, because you're trying to get them out of here before they go bad, right? And so that's how we often think about the physical flow of goods. Now, we don't necessarily have to do it, but the advantage of FIFO is it, it often, ref, you know, for most cases, it, it often reflects the physical flow in, in a good way, and it prioritizes that balance sheet. All right, so here's some disadvantages. The income statement is less accurate on the FIFO. And what I mean by less accurate, if you think about the most current price the most current price is going to be reflected in LIFO by the lazy job by, by grabbing whatever bananas on top and selling it. So that means the matching principle of matching revenues to costs is going to be followed just a little bit better under this because uh, under LIFO than it would be under FIFO because FIFO is getting some of that older bananas from the bottom of that banana freezer and bringing it up and selling it. So the income statement is less accurate than what it would be under, under LIFO. So it's less accurate under FIFO. Also under FIFO, you have a greater chance of write downs. And the reason why is because, because you're cycling through that old inventory, your inventory on your balance sheet is kept at a more current price. Under LIFO, the prices are so sta stale and old that your inventory might get, get impaired like we showed with Gavin Belson's uh, you know, box system on the other video. And it might get impaired, but your values are already so low that the, there's, you know, yeah, Phyllis, you know, there, the value is impaired, but the book value is already so low because you have such old values in your accounting system, it doesn't get impaired. So that might be considered a disadvantage that you might have to impair your FIFO, but that's the cost of having a really accurate balance sheet. If you have a more accurate balance sheet, you're more likely going to have to deal with a write-down possibly. And you will also have uh, higher taxes under FIFO, assuming uh, assuming that you have a period of, of increased prices. And what do, I, what do we mean by this? is that generally if you have a period of increasing prices, what will happen is, is that the costs on your income statement, the actual costs that you report, and most countries have you, it's a, you, they'll have you match whatever you put on your taxes, you'll have to put on your financial statements for publicly traded companies and vice versa, so you have to do the same. Technically, if you use FIFO, you'll have higher taxes because what you're doing is you're taking lower prices of goods and putting them off, uh, putting them as the ones that are being sold. So in a period of increasing prices, these goods are being sold first. The oldest ones are being sold first and they have the lower price, making it look like you have a higher margin, like in this case. So in this case, uh, under FIFO, it's a period of increasing prices. Their 10 cents a piece is what's sold by George Michael and uh, Job sells them, uh, there are 90, 90 cents a piece and the difference in profit is $1,900 versus $1,100. Guess what? we pay taxes. And so that stuff gets taxed. And so while the same amount of cash was collected, the same amount was sold, but the difference in the assumption of what was going on causes a different tax rate. So you will pay higher taxes, generally speaking, in periods of increasing prices under FIFO, under the FIFO methodology. 
All right, so what's the advantages of and problems with LIFO? Well, we're assuming this is Job running the business, not George Michael. And so the income statement is more accurate with this. And so what do we mean by that? So last in, first out means the most current inventory. We got that freezer. We're grabbing the ones from the top and we're just dipping them. And we don't care about the ones on the bottom. That's how Job runs this because he's lazy. He's lazy. He's a lazy sack. That's what he is. He's lazy. So he grabs it, he dips it, and then he he sells it. He, he's never he's never taking the time to grab from the, the, the bottom. Well, if you do that, the most current price that you have on your inventory is what is going to be what is sold. And so on your income statement, you're actually matching pretty accurately what your margins are because you're taking the most current pricing and you have your what people are paying for it and you get to see what your current margin is into the future. And that's pretty valuable. So if you think about a situation where this might be a case, let's say you're in the oil refining business and let's say, uh, I don't know that like there's a cartel of countries that set prices at their whim based on geopolitical things going on and not based on how much they can get out of the ground. Well, if you have that, you're kind of at the whim of your oil pricing related to what comes out of the ground and what they're allowing to be pumped on the other side of the planet. Well, in this kind of situation, you might say, well, what matters most? Well, if you're in the refining business, one of the things that you might want to pr prioritize is you might want to prioritize, well, no matter the price of oil, I want to know with accuracy what our margin is because we're not in the business of drilling. If we're refining this, we're in the business of buying it and then getting it out the door and selling it. So what we always want to might want to do is say, you know what, no matter what the pricing is, no matter what the OPEX guys say up or down, we're going to make sure that we have a, we report an accurate margin. Well, LIFO makes a lot of sense there because LIFO prioritizes the income statement. LIFO says, look, all right, we want the most accurate prices on our income statement. So we're going to take the most current inventory and that's what we're going to show on our inventory statement. And some of you might say, well, you know what? Yeah, Kyle, I get that, but I don't like brown bananas. Remember, I'm using the banana stand as an illustration here. All right, nobody likes brown bananas, especially really old brown bananas. I mean, you like them in banana bread, right? But like the reality is we're using this as an illustration. The fact is, is that Neither one of these is right or wrong necessarily just based on how you're thinking about bananas. I'm just using that as an illustration. So it is really the case that the income statement is more accurate using LIFO. And it's a it's a great reason to use it because your income statement will be more precise in its costing. The other advantage of this reporting wise is that you'll have fewer inventory write downs. Why is that? Because your balance sheet values are so off, right? Your balance sheet will have values that are like they could be, you know, 10 years old, 20 years old. It depends on how, how much you've, you've ever liquidated, gone through all your inventory. And so your LIFO balance could be like the difference between the price that you have on your books and the current prices could be material. And so as a result, you'll just have fewer inventory write downs because it's already written down so low. It's already so inaccurate. Your balance sheet's already so inaccurate that you're never going to have something that impairs it down. And that could be an advantage if you don't want to have, have to deal with that. As opposed to FIFO, FIFO, where George Michael, George Michael is doing it, first in, first out, first out. George Michael, when he was doing his, the balance sheet was the most accurate and the income statement was less. And so LIFO prioritizes the income statement. The, uh, FIFO uh, prioritizes the balance sheet. The other advantages of LIFO is you pay lower taxes. And uh, I was just looking up, uh, I think, Walmart's uh, inventory pricing methodology, and they use LIFO. And I guarantee you a factor of it is they want to pay lower taxes. So what do we mean by lower taxes? Just like I said in the prior the prior slide, gross profit for under LIFO is going to be lower in period of increasing prices. And it, it turns out our governments have realized that if they just have a steady state of inflation, they just get free money. So uh, right now, gross profit uh, uh, for Job is lower than it is for George Michael. And so uh, Job, the guy in the banana, he's going to pay less taxes because he's using LIFO. That's a pretty good advantage, and that's a difference, right? So there's there's sometimes advantages and disadvantages when you report, but when it comes to dollars and cents, if you can pay lower taxes, mm, that's great. Now, this is only true we're assuming increasing prices. We have decline in prices. That's a different ballgame, all right? And if it, they precipitous drop, it's a different game too. Uh, but, uh, but increasing prices, generally, if any problem you see, It'll say one or the other, and you should go with increasing or decreasing inflationary, deflationary prices. Assuming inflationary prices, they'll pay uh, lower taxes. Disadvantages. You're going to have lower net income. Book. Remember, the cash is always the same. 
the booked net income will be low. Um, so uh, apart from lower taxes, will this impact cash? This having this lower booked net income? No. Um, but you, if you do have lower taxes in the period, then it could have a positive tax effect. All right. Uh, and that would impact cash. But if you assume away the tax effect of this, uh, will it impact cash? No. So you will book lower net income, but uh, that's that's an accrual thing, a cruel item. Balance sheet is, will be less accurate under this method. And the other thing with LIFO is it might not represent the physical flow of goods. Some of you, the, this banana stand and the freezer might not be working as an example. So think of it this way. A lot of times it's you, the example that's used is think of a pile of coal. Coal doesn't go bad, all right? You, you get the coal, you put it in a pile, and you can leave it there for a long time. It's been in the ground a long time, right? So you mine it, you put it in this big pile. Well, you add to the pile and you take away from the pile. You add to the pile, you take away. You could have coal there for a very long time and it won't go bad. It's just sitting there at the bottom of the pile. And so that process of adding to this pile of coal and then taking some out is similar to what we do with LIFO. And so LIFO does represent some inventory flows, but generally speaking, most businesses are trying to get rid of their oldest items first so they can get the newest items in their inventory. And so that's important to remember that the physical flow of inventory doesn't necessarily have to match what the accounting assumption is about the flow. It could be completely different. And then there's also LIFO liquidation. Uh, this, in essence, is a disadvantage is that when you liquidate all your LIFO, it, technically, I don't know if I put this in a disadvantage or an advantage. Depends on how you're reporting it, because if you have a LIFO liquidation, that means you blow through all of your inventory. That means you go through all of your inventory and you sell all your inventory and you don't have it goes down to zero. So there's no historical costs in it. Well, if you do that in a period then your margins are gonna be really high in that period because you're using this old costing and old pricing. And so it's a disadvantage in the sense it makes your income statement less accurate, but if you're a financial reporting person and you wanna have more tools at your disposal for kind of this management of earnings, which is not being encouraged, but uh, it is a tool that could be used for managing earnings. And so it's an advantage slash disadvantage when it comes to LIFO liquidation and liquidating all your assets and getting all those old values out. And so that's the advantages and disadvantages of the different accounting uh, for inventory reporting assumptions. See you in the next video.